Uh, hello, um, I'm Peter. I will talk today about merging maps. Uh, Saber is there, so if there is anything. So I um, work for Lutra Consulting. I'm a partner and I'm based in Czech Republic. Uh, we are doing uh, everything around QGIS, mainly development of QGIS, uh, let's say point clouds and others, and then uh, merging maps. Um, merging maps is a platform, uh, server, mobile application, and API and tools that allows you to version your data, put it on cloud, put it on uh, mobile phones, and then uh, do some field surveys very easy. It's all based on QGIS. Uh, it's basically putting your QGIS project into your mobile directly as it is, without any transformation. And um, the application, as you see here, it's, uh, it should be very user-friendly. So we tend to say it's like no training. Uh, today, I will go through five case studies that you can find on our website, merginmaps.com, and we will dive into them a bit more closely and see what was done there and uh, uh, how these emerging maps was used in real-world examples. Uh, there is another presentation at 3 o'clock in this room that will be more technical. So let's see what is the conventional method if you want to gather some data in a field. Um, so you may or may not have GPS handheld or mobile phone. You have your notebook with pen and you type down the coordinates and data you want to store. Maybe you have a camera, photo, you take photos, and you try to mark down which photos are where. And then you come to the office and you need to put it in your uh, QGIS or other system or Excel. Um, why it is not good? It is very slow. It's very error. There are many errors in transcribing, and you can lose your paper and everything. And there are no live results. And it's very difficult to match, match photos to, to, to the point. So something like this was before, before uh, uh, Merging Bus was introduced uh, in this case study in a company in Indonesia. They are doing mining. So what Merging Bus, how Merging Bus was used? So the GIS, oh sorry, uh, the administrator, he used QGIS to set up his project with background maps uh, and uh, layers, uh, vector layers to gather data. There was a, a point layer for drill holes and then li line layer for trenches. And then this uh, pr project was pushed to the cloud and uh, merging maps was installed on uh, four, four mobiles of people in a, in a field, downloaded it in an office, and then they went in a field, gather data all day with the mobile, come back and push the data back to to the cloud so you get immediately update of your QGIS project without any transcription um, so as i said the uh, these guys they were had uh, vector layers for points and lines um, they were storing uh, various attributes um, for lithology and uh, geological surveys um, most important uh, it's also uh, you have uh, who did the measurement, so you automatically get a username, when it was, you have it geolocated, you can attach pictures, and uh, you have additional background maps that were useful for them. So, for example, they have the contours map and some aerial maps of the, of the, of the area. Uh, so, this is a picture from the case study. So, you see here there is some drill hole, and uh, as I said, uh, this Man Mandrake Copper Gold uh, company in Indonesia, uh, they they work on um, a new new place where which should increase um, I think by 15 percent. Let me get 30 percent uh, Indonesia produce of copper, and it should be for 30 years of mine time. So they are doing the geological exploration of the area uh, with the merging maps. Um, also, they use merging maps uh, community edition version, so they can deploy it on their server if they like. As e everything is open source, so you can like uh, deploy it yourself. So then, the next case study is uh, firefighters in uh, Australia, um, and uh, they are the Volcrief Volunteer Fire Service Brigade. Uh, they have five, five, six people 
in a field, um, and they um, if the if the fire area is uh, below 50 hectares, usually the the local f uh, volunteers groups are taking care of the fire, and also they uh, they uh, need to take care of the prevention and uh, and uh, readiness for the fire in the area they have assigned to. So. Um, what what uh, what these guys are doing is that um, they use merging maps and QGIS to uh, do prevention. So um, they have a uh, vector layers where they have a uh, drive trucks and they go to the area and monitor the trucks. Like uh, if it is possible to to use this track with um, let's say bigger ve vehicle or just uh, a smaller one. So the condition of the tracks, basically, so if there is somewhere fire, then they can or cannot use the track. Then they monitor the water points and hydrants. So um, they have some data from the government, obviously, but they go to the places and check before the season of the fires that if the hydrant is, is OK, or if the water point, like small lake, if uh, what's the capacity of water in the lake, and so on, they, they put it down in the margin maps. And uh, also they map a fauna and flora in the area because some areas uh, they have more vivid uh, fauna and flora. And uh, sometimes what they do is they burn um, some area before the season. So when there is some fire, the, the burned area is not burning again, obviously. So it's kind of like um, prevention of the fire spread in case of some problem. But if they have the map of the, of the uh, important areas for fauna flora in the area, they can um, omit them from the from the burning places. Uh, so this is a map. Uh, this is their map uh, from their project. Uh, so you see here some uh, water points. Um, then here you see the tracks, and uh, the color somehow represents like which type of vehicle can uh, drive uh, on the track. Um, and then this is the some other other points. Um, so. Um, also, they map these uh, this areas and properties and so on, uh, which is not shown on this, this particular cut of the map. Uh, what they also do is the, is the fire spreading. Um, uh, so they have some numerical simulation. Um, so for example, uh, sorry. Uh, for example here, um, there is a parking lot. And they model that, OK, if someone throws a cigarette and the fire starts here, they have a simulation that where it is in, in which minute the and uh, this is in QGIS, and they can like simulate uh, how the their brigade will handle the fire in the area. So they can do some simulation. Um, and then there is a fire. Um, so uh, what you can do without some advanced technology is that you can project OSM map over whiteboard and then use the the marker to. As they, as as the as the trucks are in the field and they're calling you, they can you can mark on the whiteboard over the map like what's going on and then call them back. Um, with the with the merging maps and QGIS, uh, you can you can use a projector to to map a QGIS project there and also push it push it back to the to the trucks. So for example, first of all, the, the truck drivers they have this map already before the fire, and then during the fire. Uh, this is a prototyping during the fire. What they're doing is uh, you can push them live updates. But this, is a, this was a prototyping stage. But at least they have a map before the fire. So, um, so this is the second case. Uh, then let's go to the third one. Um, this one is a fiber. Um, what is nice on, uh, on designing the, uh, the project with QGIS and merging maps uh, is that you can start for very simple prototype. Like everyone can uh, start, like download these open source tools, and you can start with just simple background map, one point layer. You can try something, and then you can easily, easily improve over time. So many of these use cases, for example, also this this uh, one, they started with a simple project after after some conference, and then they improve because you can very easily add a new field, add new layer. You don't need to tell someone else, some other company, okay, please, we want different field. You can like do it yourself and do iteration. So, so you can try it, very simple project, and build up a complex project. So for these fiber, fiber companies, they, they want to connect to your house or flat uh, with the fiber. And uh, it's uh, kind of complicated with all these uh, closures and, and fibers connected and splicing. 
but what what uh, you need to need to start with effectively is um, is that uh, you need to mm, you need to get a picture uh, or go to the area and find out which houses needs to be connected to the so then you need you can design uh, the the connection routes where to where to dig the trenches how to put the cables ducts there and then you you can connect the houses but it all starts that you get some data from uh, from government like okay these are the houses you want to connect and uh, these jacobs guys in uh, in belgium they uh, what they did is that they used merging maps and QGIS, so they got the government data and they have a uh, people uh, in a field that go to each address and verify with merging maps that okay this is a building where is the mailbox how we can get to the building uh, where is the pod where we where we will connect connect to the the building how many inhabitants there are how many flats and so on so they have some uh, big uh, they take a fo photos so this and then this comes to designers and they are very much able to then design a nice fiber network for for that area or city uh, what is what I really appreciate there is that as I said it's from simplicity to complexity so you can start from small and then add add new layers add new fields very easily um, also what is nice that you can use in uh, QGIS and merging maps uh, constraints so uh, your surveyors they don't need they you can force them to fill some fill some fields so you can like force the data quality right uh, and then eliminate errors and improve the quality of the data uh, so then there is the construction and engineering um, so this again Belgian uh, company Belgian roads research center they have 100 people uh, in a company and then doing um, a lot of uh, things uh, in the Belgian roads and payments and infrastructure so historically they they use Excel spreadsheets and they have like one S3 license for a desktop and uh, because the, the the field collection is quite expensive with S3 so they just use handwritten notes and they store data in Excel and they use just the address from uh, I know as a location point you know the address of the, the closest uh, flat or house so this is obviously uh, not ideal solution because you have vendor lock-in you have expensive licenses you cannot afford the license or don't want license for every desktop user and field user and it's all the black box so you don't know what's going on there you don't have a control where this where the open source comes so uh, we did a small development project with them as a Lutra consulting developed them some custom feature they needed for their work in the system and now they they have a uh, QGIS and this is merging maps going on and uh, a lot of stuff in a car uh, they also use uh, they also for example here they do uh, uh, pedestrian permits quality and uh, accessibility so they have this this nice map where, where something is broken on the pavement and uh, most importantly they also use the max art uh, GNSS devices and they have this uh, crazy looking uh, wheelchair with the GNSS device inside uh, which they uh, use for uh, measuring the accessibility of the of the pavement so it is possible for for uh, handicapped people to to nicely go to the pavements so they have a different one but I have this uh, Emlet GNSS here with with me but uh, you can use many different device types uh, with merging maps mm. So uh, that's that's this one, and here comes the the one of the last uh, case study I want to present you today. Uh, it's uh, agriculture, and uh, this is in uh, South Africa. This is in uh, South Africa. Uh, so um, uh, this company uh, were helping uh, is helping uh, local farmers uh, to improve the the productivity and efficiency of their farms. So these people are um, very much uh, non-GIS people and they do not have many times any technical education at all, but they have smartphones and they want to uh, get a better um, pro efficiency and better farm. So they, these guys are doing a consultancy for them and uh, they developed an 
uh, MP platform, um, which has uh, many components. Uh, it all begins with um, uh, QGIS, of course, uh, and merging maps. So they have a merging maps project for each farmer, and the farmers can, uh, uh, during their um, uh, work on the fields and farms, they can uh, they can store uh, data about their farms, like uh, moisture, pest observation. Uh, and I, there is a plenty of things they are they are noting down. Let me uh, soil nutrition, irrigation, and also the production, the fr the fruit size, and so on. So they have uh, projects uh, to store a lot of data, like photos, uh, and so on. And these uh, data are pushed to the to the Merging Maps Cloud, uh, which is uh, branded as MPI platform. Uh, the platform uh, uses um, uh, some advanced advanced uh, API scripts that we developed. Uh, one is called Work Packages. So all these 200 farm data is is merged to one massive QGIS project with all the data which is used for from them, for the company. So they have it in one project. And also it's a both direction. So if you do something in the master project, it will be propagated to sub-projects. And then um, the from this master project, uh, they use another tool, which is called DBSync, another part of the merging maps ecosystem. And DBSync, what it does is takes your project and push it to Postgres database. Again, like on live. So you have data on the merging maps platform, and with this uh, synchronization script, you have the same data replicated in your database. Uh, and from there, it is not far uh, to uh, from the Postgres. If you have a data in Postgres, they have the web web application built on top of it, where you can log in, you can like see your farm data, you can see all the reports for your data. And also, it, this is used uh, for consultants. So when they come to the place physically, they have the reports, they have everything from the platform before. So in a few hours, they can effectively have help the farmers with, uh, with, uh, with, their, um, uh, with their help. Uh, yeah. Um, what, how, how these farmers uh, did it before? Some of them uh, was that they have a huge project from these consultants. The QGIS project was exported to the point layer, imported to Fulcrum, then there was a, there was a survey in a Fulcrum, then it was uh, exported from Fulcrum to Excel, then it was fixed in Excel, then you have PyQGIS QGIS script to put it in QGIS, and then you produce the map, and then you have the report. So, so now it's just a merging maps project where you sync button, serial data, sync it back, and that's it. So, um, as you can imagine, it's way better. Uh, so that's that's all I wanted to show you on this presentation. There will be another one at three o'clock uh, that you can join for more technical uh, bits and also new features that was developed last year. And um, uh, we have a stand with Saber in a sponsor area. Uh, so if you have any question, feel free to come. Um, and um, if you want to read more about these five case studies, I go to the Merging Maps.com case studies webpage. There are these five case studies from last year and then maybe 10, 15 more from, from previous years. Thank you very much for your attention and open to questions. Any question? I wanted to ask if I, um, George from Cyprus. Uh, I wanted to ask if you maintain roles in uh, how uh, you, the data is being captured, and uh, who uh, has the right to update or delete or. Okay, if I understand right, um, so <coughs> this is what I will talk in the afternoon presentation. But um, there on the cloud, cloud part. You have the project, and you can assign the roles. So, 
you can invite 10, 10 users for your project, and then each user can have a different roles. So you can have readers, writers, you can have people that can only modify data in the field, and you can have other people that can also uh, change the, the project in the QGIS. So you can define for everyone like what is the role for, for, for the particular project. And then, then, then based on that, you can or cannot do a changes. And uh, the first part with the rows, I, I don't know if I get uh, correctly that, but uh, generally the data is stored as a geo package. The, the vector data you store is uh, in internally stored as a geo package, both on your phone and on the cloud. So, so the synchronization is transferring the difference files between geo packages pretty much. Uh, as a synchronization backend. Working? Is it working? Yeah. Uh, Sultan from Saudi Arabia, would you please go to the slide that you show us the project in Malaysia with the trucks position? Sorry, which one? The one in Malaysia. The way you show the trucks. Go back, go back. More. Uh, yeah, with the, the fire, I think. The I uh, no uh, after that the trucks after location that? yes I don't know which one sorry there is a, a truck location you mentioned truck location. This yes one. would you please uh, can you do real time monitoring like uh, system of system you know you can did you develop like real time monitoring if you like to monitor uh, on time any phenomena like uh, for uh, uh, trucks uh, uh, and the site, you know. Uh, if you do, do you do that before? Yes, hi, this is Saber. Yes, you can do live track, uh, tracking of uh, users. So if they have internet connection, you can, there is another uh, button, it's not clear here, but uh, if they enable it, it's like a Google map live track and they can uh, see other users live where they are. Night also? Sorry? During the day and in the night? As long as they don't turn it off, yes. Thank you. It's like a shared location on Google Map. Ah, but yeah, you because in night the darkness, you know, so how can you, you manage trucks? Is it by lighting or by radar or optical sensor? Or? No, we just use GPS. Ah, I see. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.